Hello YouTube friends, welcome to the Red Pear channel. I am your host, Mary Ellen. This is an episode of At K3N Cloth's Tales Weekly Slow Stitch 2024. Uh, I want to do three things. I want to finish up on week seven and show you what I have wrought. Talk about week eight and maybe do some more discussion around the tea and iron dyeing process. So without further ado, let us get at it. So week seven was do a scrappy heart. And this is what I was able to do. I'm going to hold it up a little bit closer. So there is, uh, this is a beaded blanket stitch. So I have done, I think, a blanket stitch, split blanket, and now I've done a beaded blanket. Um, so I have accidentally started a, a, a blanket stitch study. Uh, these are all running stitches and they're a combination of a very light pink thread that reads almost white. And then um, a, uh, oh, a perlay cotton, a uh, perlay uh, multicolored thread that is the sort of the main weave. And these two are, they're actually uh, numbers from a film strip fabric that I've combined into 14, 14 being Valentine's Day, and then this being the result. This is a sample of the iron and um, tea dyeing. And then this is the back. This is heavy. This is, this is really satisfying. I mean, the, uh, I understand what Catherine means when she says that at a point it becomes its own fabric and it's not uh no longer pieces there is it becomes a different thing and this is for me a, a superb example of these used to be bits and they're not bits anymore they are part of a thing so that is our result for week seven we are now on week eight put that off to the side there we are now on week eight which is pajaji which is a Korean fabric piecing. And I always thought that was um, Indian fabric piecing because of probably me misunderstanding Kate at the last homely house. Who, if you are familiar with her channel, does a lot of quilting and sewing and so on and so forth. And in her, I guess one of her main workspaces she has uh pajaji curtains and they are they go on for miles they're a huge part of her decor and very very pretty and she does them almost like terribly small like maybe two inch squares um very very small uh so i'm going to be doing another sheet that is about this big and so uh way back in my playlist somewhere there is something called a chindi rug a chindi rug is an indian rug that is available in very inexpensive stores like dollar stores and so forth um here in north america and canada and they use the scraps of um saris saris and they weave those and weave them into a, a rug. And I bought one, actually I bought two, and I undid them because I wanted the fabric. So this, careful not to bunk it, is the box and I will undo it. Clonk, bonk. And let's get that out of the way because it's all dark. I'm hoping you can see. Oops, bang, crash. These are all the chindi bits that I have. So I will make a, I gotta take this out of the way because I can't see. I will make something out of these fabrics. Uh, and I'll pull something out at random. Can I be random? Can, can anybody be truly random? Let's try. I want something with some color in it. Let's try this. Sure, why not? That's a bit. There we are. 
So this is very, very see-through. You can, uh, well, no, you can't. Can you see through anything? Can you see through? You should be able to see through it. It also needs an ironing. Yeah, you can see you can see the um, the white envelope or the, the white paper through that. So I will take some of those pieces, and these are a nice a nice size, I think. This I don't have like translucent fabric really, so we're gonna have to make some do, I think. But one hundred percent, step one is gonna be to do to pick the fabrics, iron them, and then uh, get after them that way. But I think I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be really interesting. I have always, I'm real, I, have I mentioned like only a hundred times that I absolutely love this uh, stitch along? I have done so many things already. It is week eight and I have wanted to try them. So this is so up my my alley and Pajaji is um, one of those things. Um, this is the other stuff that I pulled out. I won't be doing the navy, but here's another great example. But it just, it, we need an iron. That's what we need. We need an iron. So we're not gonna worry too much about that. We're not gonna too, worry too much about that. Um, oh yes, the, very exciting. When I finished, I'll bring this back. When I finished this, I actually finished a tube of beads. I know. I only have, you know, about 15 tons of them left to go. But then I have a little container that I finished. Woo! That's exciting. I have another tube of it left. So if we need some more of those beads, I still have them. But I'm just very, very pleased. One of the random things that I am doing again this year is I am keeping all the bits of stuff that I empty. So this will go in the um, save the trash until the end of the year. I do the same thing with glue sticks. Um, and I'm gonna try and find a way to record other things like um, finish up embroidery floss cards and so on and so forth. Cause I wanna see the consumption rate. I have a rate for last year, so we have a baseline, but I wanna see um, what all we're able to do. Last comment I have about this is, I don't know if you can see here, the space. This is where I started, and then we totally got good. Once again, I love the opportunity to be able to practice something and get good at it. So there we are. Now then, uh, we want to talk about The coffee and iron dyeing. Uh, there was a bunch of you that provided discussion, commentary, theories, thoughts, and I have uh, recorded them here. And we're going to talk about it as a bunch. I'm not going to attribute this person said that, this person said that, because that's. Uh, that's a little intense. Um, we want to be able to have a, I would call it a discourse or a discussion to be able to expand our common knowledge of the process. And this is a great opportunity for us to, well, ask me, to do a deep dive into the dye process. And this is as much for me as it is for you, because for me to do this, I have learned a lot and this is almost me sort of mm, matriculating on what I do. You, you see one, you do one, you teach one. As they say in some circles. So this is February what? 1924. And we, when we last left off, we had ideas about salt. We had ideas about I am going to 
to call this now by what I know the internet to more properly call this, which is SCG, which is spent coffee grounds. And if we have an acronym for this now, you know that there has been people studying it. We have the iron, we have the fabric, we have the temperature. Uh, so one thing that I did not include that is really important, or at least um, a large component of this, but we assume that it's all the same, is water. So this is something new. But if you think about water, you have uh, hard water, soft water, um, salt water, fresh water, frother, water with additives, bottled water, distilled water. There are a lot of different kinds of water that we can be using. Rainwater, uh, rainwater that's got acid rain in it, uh, more clean acid water, uh, more clean water. Sorry, I'm just taking my hoodie off because I'm hot now. So we didn't talk at all about water. And I just want to include it for completeness. Water, temperature. And time. So. What did we talk about? So we talked about salt. Uh, so let's talk, let's talk about salt first. So theories, thoughts. So one of them is that the Himalayan, him, uh, lay and salt has about 84 trace elements. I think it's around like 97% salt salt. So NaCl is the formula for salt. And then the other sort of 3% is the bits. And that means it's unrefined. So our table salt is refined, meaning a lot of impurities have been taken out. It has been likely bleached. Um, so table salt is different than Himalayan salt. So we have table salt and we have Himalayan table salt and I also talked about rock salt and no research uh, done on rock salt at the moment. We'll just look at the Himalayan salt. So the Himalayan salt because I have a picture. So this isn't a peer reviewable. So take some of what I'm saying as a little of a research, but not super research. Uh, okay, so we know that this is the salt salt. The 3% is other, 3% is mostly, or at least the highest uh, component ratios. Uh, let me find the line here. Da -da 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 -da. Sulfur, calcium, potassium. And they sit here. So, um, according to the internet, calcium hydro hydrochlorate is widely used as a bleaching powder. So, calcium C A C L O two is a bleach. So we have the 
calcium, the CA is the calcium, the CA is the chlorine that's available in the salt. So I am going to say that these little spots that I'm able to get, these little trace elements, and they are trace when you look at them here, there's not the bulk of it, it's little bits and pieces, splodges here and there, is probably calcium chlor hypochlorite. So, in Himalayan salt, it is this bit that is doing the splattering. And it is uh, it's widely used as a bleaching powder. So, I don't know if there is a detergent on the market or whatever, but a dusting of bleaching powder might give it those splotchy bits. So that's salt. Information about salt, I think. Um, oh yes, yeah, so the second part of salt. So this is salt one. We have salt item two. And that is, so this is, um, uh, the makeup and this is the function. So there was thoughts about, well, what is actually the salt doing in this, uh, mixture? Is it acting as a resist? Is it acting as a reactive agent? Is it acting as a, as a, an, sort of an accelerant or um, something that is improving the, um, the capture of the uh, dye? Is it that well, uh, we don't, we don't know. Hang on. Let's use the Google machine. Boop. Uh, salt function in Why is salt used in dyeing? So, in reactive dyeing, salts play an important role by improving the affinity of dye stuffs towards the fiber and accelerating the interaction of the dye stuff. Accelerating the interaction of the dye stuff and reducing its solubility. Okay, so. Here's another bit. Ooh. So salt is not a dye fixative as it does nothing to make the dye more permanent. However, it aids in the dyeing process by helping to drive the dye onto the fiber out of the solution so that it is in the right place. Help to drive the dye onto the fiber. So this uh, it's not a fixative, but it helps drive the dye onto the fiber, according to this one. Uh, let's go back and see if there's any better wording. Ah, here's a better, better set of wording. It allows the fibers to absorb the dye. That's a better, that's a better phrase. So salt essentially is a helper for the fiber 
to take in whatever dye is kicking around. So we've got the makeup, we've got the function. Um, anything else? Um, what else? So the next thing I think we're going to talk about is, and like I say, we know that somebody somewhere has done research because we now have an abbreviation for it, which is an SCG. which is spent coffee grounds. Um, we want function. So this is, as someone rightly pointed out, not uh, instant coffee. And once again, we had thoughts about, is it um, acting as a resist? Is it acting as um, like what it can be doing a whole bunch of different things? So let us see what we have to say. Um, spent coffee grounds in a dye. So spent coffee grounds, SCG, are commonly known as a waste resource so that makes sense. So that means um, it is a byproduct of making something else, i.e. coffee, and a raw material useful for dyeing. SCG is a rich source of natural colorant from the class of flavonoids and anthocyanins. So this is it's a natural colorant. which if we think about how we use coffee dyed paper, we are using that to change the color of the dye and we are almost always using the instant coffee. So that makes some sense, but there should, one of these articles, ah, oh, here we are. So this is the Iowa State University News Service. Brewed coffee grounds, SCG, offer a sustainable alternative for clothing dye see what that has to say. So blah, blah, blah. So I, I will read. Uh, Iowa State University researchers have found a natural way to add color to clothing using the leftover grounds from your daily cup of coffee. The textile industry uses more than 2 million tons of chemicals and th synthetic dyes annually, which is why researchers are interested in finding sustainable alternatives. The textile industry is an abomination of uh, excessive use of um, water and messing up water supplies, of adding chemicals and um, otherwise not creating things that are usable at, the, at their end state. So this is a huge deal. Um, so blah, blah, blah. Uh, once I realized it worked, I went to local coffee shops and asked for their leftover grounds. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so uh, Nam, so Chunhui Xian is the assistant professor and Nam, so Lion Nam, uh, dried the coffee grounds for three days before boiling them with purified water to extract the dye. I don't know that we want to go that far, but let's put that little recipe down. Uh, dry grounds for three days. Boil with purified water is, I think, distilled water. I'll use their wording. Water and then this gives you extract to dye. 
He then tested it on cotton, linen, rayon, silk, and polyester using different mordants, which helped the dye bond to the fabric. And results created a greater variety of shades in brown. So this little chart here, I'm gonna see what the, this looks like to you. So this is the chart of the browns that he was able to create. And this is uh, non-mordanted, and then the different types of mordanted, and then the kinds of material. So we were using essentially a non-mordant cotton, which is that shade, which is, for me, well in that, well in that zone. That might, might be the iron though, I'm not sure. But, so, the, S, the SCG is a dye. That's what that is. Okay, so I think we've got the, so the function is it's natural. And somewhere in other, re I wonder if I had took a picture of it. We'll see, Let's see if I'm smart enough. Uh, that's Himalayan salt, 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 nope. So it seems to me, uh, I am not gonna say that because I, I cannot prove it here, so I'm not gonna say anything. We, and it's not a huge secret, I will uh, share with you if I can verify it on the internet. Then, so we've got that, which is, we've got the SCG, the iron, iron. And we had discussion about I, the differences in the kinds of, I was using huge chunks of iron in my uh, dye process. And Catherine was using very um, small amounts. So small pieces of iron. And I think there's probably two things that are varying there. One is the, let's call it the size and weight of the iron. And the composition of the material. So you can have, um, and I wish I had an, an example here so I could show you it purely from the magnetic perspective. So you can have things that are very lightly magnetic, and then you have things that are intensely magnetic. The difference in the magnet strength is going to be, I think, in part in how much iron there is. So if there isn't a lot of iron in the bits and pieces that are being used in this process, you're not going to get the iron result. If you are using something that is predominantly or exclusively iron, you probably are going to get a heavier result. I am using industrial grade bits of stuff that are probably going to be naturally iron because it is a tough uh, it, industrial kind of material. If you are using something like a, a hairpin or a, a safety pin or something that is very, very um, light use, then you don't need as much iron. I One of the things that I used in this was a, um, a safety pin. And I am aware that that safety pin has probably got a little bit of iron in it, but it doesn't have a lot. And I was expecting the, the, um, the safety pin to rot like crazy through the, the process, and it didn't. And if it's not decomposing, that means that there's no iron in it. So that's what we're able to talk about in terms of the iron. So um, this is makeup. So let's flip this open. And my brain feels so much better having, I really want to, is it that? No, it's that. Okay. So let's do this recipe again. Oh, we didn't do it. Nobody said anything about the tea. Oh, 
don't think anybody said anything about tea. But tea is going to be another one of those things. And tea might be... Um, I think you were looking for a tannin. So if you used an herbal tea that didn't have any tannin in it, the tea component wouldn't work, if that makes any sense. Let's do this, because that might be a faster way for me to find it. Um, Tannin iron absorption. Wow, okay, that's a lot. Um, dye. Oh, well, look, here's some information. So iron, so this is what I was, uh, didn't want to say but can talk about now so iron will always interact with tannin to form a black in fact the formation of a black is a test for the presence of tannin oh depending on the concentrations mm, the results may be light grays iron will darken or sadden the colors of other dyes while increasing their fastness so that is about color fastness so iron so we have one more thing. Go one more thing. Or tea. Let's talk. Let's talk about the tea. Oops. Tea. Tannin. Okay. Iron will always interact. Tannin to form black, and this said that adding iron to a tea will show you if there is any tannin. So if you're uncertain about whether or not your tea has any tannin in it, add a rusty bowl to it and see what color it turns. turns. And it says, depending on the concentration, so concentration, so change concentration, we'll get a light gray. In fact, the formation of a black is a test for the presence of tannin, depending on the concentrations of what. Okay, let's open this and see what we have to say here. I'm very glad you're here. Iron is not a dye or a tannin. It is a metal mordant and a color modifier. So we've got some more information. So makeup, iron, function. We're not done yet. Okay, it is not a dye. It is not a tannin. It is a metal mordant color my Oh, okay, so this must be, depending on the concentration, the result may be light grays. Uh, so we recommend never using it, iron, above 4%. So WOF is a very, 
let's write that down because it's an important phrase. It is weight of fiber. So when you were dyeing something, let's say you have a tiny piece, you weigh that and it's uh, an ounce or 50 grams, and then that becomes your place to create some ratios, or you just make it up. You just throw some things in, horseshoes, hand grenades. It depends on how precise, how repeatable you want to get the thing. But WOF is a popular dyeing um, uh, expression. The unwanted presence of iron can stain cloth, create blotches, spotting, and ruin dyeing. For this reason, cracked, an animal, cr cracked enamel and rusted pots are to be avoided. Huh, okay. So we are essentially uh, creating we are deliberately forcing that to happen. So there is no right or wrong rule. It is just the way mother nature works and we are creating something that th this recipe is saying we're not trying, they're not trying to create what we're trying to create. It's at the opposite end of the spectrum, if you know what I mean. The other thing that I want to talk about here is Mewa. Mewa. Mewa is a, it's a dye company supply shop. So if you go to, uh, I think it's Mewa dot ca dot com even just google mewa you will be able to get loads and loads and loads and loads of information about the dyeing process so let's do a little synthesis of what we have just uh, gone through and bless your heart if you're still here i mean i'm i'm very happy to talk to the the one or two people that are probably still with me uh uh, love you to pieces. I am so glad you are here. I am so glad that I have you to talk to because otherwise this is all going to be scrolling around in my head and I get to put it down in black and white. So what have we learned? Eh. So, uh, we have one more thing. One more thing. Tannin is a dye. Or tannin dye. Okay. So, uh, do I have it? T, tannin. Okay, and tannin is a dye. So according to this, the dye is very light, imparting a subtle beige color. Its power comes when it is combined with iron to create silver, gray, and black in combination with other dyes. Oh, and this is another useful site, I think, and that is botanical colors. Uh, I don't want that. I want yes, botanical colors. It's a dye company. These two shops will also give you loads of uh, 
other dye information and it's important to have um it's important to know what you're working with remember when we said this and Catherine is all over this as well use your gloves make sure that you are taking care of yourself when you're doing this because this is chemistry this is actual it doesn't feel like it is dangerous and this formula isn't particularly dangerous it's just going to be hard on your skin if you use it but there are some materials that you can find out in the wilds that if you start boiling them up and doing things without having your proper homework done, so you can cause yourself harm. So these are places where you can go and get reliable information about the dye process. Not trying to put uh, fear into you, just trying to keep you safe. Health and safety, top five. Okay, so what do we learn? So. T. So what are the dyes? The dyes are the tannin and the spent coffee grounds. Uh, you have a mordant. Well, let's call that a helper. It's kind of like a helper thing. That's the iron. Salt. So I don't know if salt is a mordant, but I just, I'm just gonna call it um, another helper material. Um, so a mordant changes the color. And this is a fabric. absorption. Which is the salt. So we have two dyes. We have the iron. We have the salt. Salt, the CG, the iron, the T. And then we have fabric water temperature time. Oh, and then um, uh, da, 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 da. the calcium, so the Himalayan salt calcium is likely a bleach. Is that how you spell bleach? C-H. There. So those are your working elements and now we can we i can <clears throat> pardon me uh use the gears that we now know in a more um controlled way so um Where did we, so, uh, what do I want to do? I don't know that I need anything more to say at this point. And time, and we can vary, vary the time, also will change things. So if I, so, if you want, I want a light color. I use tannin. SCGs. A low amount of iron. Enough, but not too much. And salt and Himalayan salt will be the same as here but the Himalayan salt will add the bleach and if I want the speckles this is the speckles I can have the Himalayan salt Himalayan pink salt H the HPS If 
gives you the speckles. There. So really the thing that I need to change the most is reduce the amount of iron and I could probably reduce the amount of tannin as well because I am using a 12 bag five minute boiling water steeped tea so I could reduce that by half or 75 percent and I would probably also change these colors so that's information for us. I hope you enjoyed that. I super appreciate have you to, to, to work through this with me. Um, I'm going to leave this here for a bit in case you want to screenshot that or bookmark it or do whatever it is that you need to do. Next time we see each other, um, hopefully I will have done something with this. Um, that's all for now. As ever, take good care of yourself. And if you're doing some dyeing, remember to do a little bit of health and safety check before you go. Um, know before you dig, know before you experiment, and um, stay out of trouble. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon. Bye now.